These exercises 28 through 31 look at the effects of chemical agents on the bacteria. Chemical agents can be any type of chemicals that will be classified as either antiseptics or disinfectants. Antiseptics is what we describe as those chemicals that can be used on the surface of the skin versus a disinfectant which is used on the surface of an inanimate object. So that's how we distinguish them is by what surface you're putting them on. Usually this is tested by the paper disc method to see how effective a particular agent is. You inoculate the petri dish with a bacterial lawn and then you take the paper disc and you soak it or saturate it completely with whatever chemical you're testing, place that paper disc on the, the plate and then you're going to incubate it. After incubation of typically 24, maybe 48 hours, then you're going to look at the plate with the various discs on them and measure the zone of inhibition. The zone of inhibition is that area around the disc where there is no growth. So for some chemicals, there may not be a zone of inhibition. You may have growth right up to the disc. Others, you may have a fairly large area where there's no growth. The greater that zone of inhibition, the more effective that agent is because the chemical has diffused out into the medium and has inhibited the growth. Metals, this is another experiment that's looking at the effect of metals. Metals often are inhibitory towards uh, especially bacterial growth, so they make very good disinfecting agents. You have to make sure, however, not to have the concentration too high because it can also become toxic to our cells. How do they work? They typically interfere with enzymatic activity. Once again, you disrupt or uh, inhibit enzyme activity. That means your Metabolic reactions cannot take place and that's going to lead to cell death. Usually a very small concentration is very effective in that inhibition. In terms of some of your natural chemical agents that are found, lysozyme is found in your tears. It's a small amount. It's also in your saliva. It has enzymes that also are inhibitory, so they, they help to prevent infection. Garlic horseradish, onions, some of these different natural foods do have some inhibitory properties to them. A lot of your fruit juices are acidic and bacteria prefer a more neutral to alkaline environment. So just the mere fact of lowering the pH uh, makes these juices inhibitory to bacterial infection or contamination. Alcohol is also said the high content of alcohol also inhibits the growth of bacteria.